Good morning, everybody. Nick from Meat Smoke Fire for cook number 92 or something like that. I've just realised I haven't put all of them into the series, so there might actually be more than that. We might get to 100 before we're expecting to get to 100. Anyway, um, today it is howling out here. Um, so we've got the mics on. So hopefully you can all hear me. So if you can hear me, just let us know. If you can't hear me, let us know. And Helena has got a mic on as well. Morning, morning. Um, so... Um, you'll be able to hear her really well, but you won't, you won't be able to hear Andrea. Um, and if Mama swears, I do apologise, but, you know, anyway. Right. Uh, three cooks this week. I announced them yesterday. Three cooks. Didn't you see the other hand? Three cooks. Uh, Andrea, you probably didn't hear you, but I'll shout what Andrea says. Uh, three cooks. Uh, we're going to do uh, Italian meatballs. Um, we are going to do some Vietnamese spring rolls. So I know I posted a picture last night. Those aren't the spring rolls we're doing. We're doing some different ones, but I haven't taken a photo of them yet. And we're going to do... What have I forgotten? What else are we doing? I've gone, I've gone barking mad. Oh, Japanese. a Japanese rice bowl. Sorry, it's been a, been a weird week. Um, got to go out to dinner with David, who run, you know, owns Alfresco on Thursday. So that was lovely to see him. He was back over from... Australia, so if you're watching David, great to see you. Um, but yeah, very odd week. Here comes the helicopters. Anyway, um, so let me take the camera, do the usual bit. We've got Andrea, and I've got her name right. Um, and I should say, uh, thank you, Andrea, for raising so much money as I called you Andy. Um, anyway, so uh, here we go. We've got the RB73. Beautiful, kicking out. I can feel it over here. That's nice. Um, kick it. Yeah, you're going to get warm, Andrea. And then we've got Helena and Mama on here. Morning. And Morning. we have started it. So the suggestion, yes. the suggestion about three months ago from Ben Slater Farming was, and I don't know if Ben's on, but was to do a cocktail. Today's cocktail is a Hugo Spritz. Hugo Spritz. So it is elderflower. It's prosecco. It's gin. Uh, it's soda water and some mint in there. It should... And it's delightful. Perfect. So we'll publish a recipe for that. Thank you, Ben. We'll publish Ben's recipe for that. Um, but cool. Helena, obviously, on the keyboard, typing away. Morning. Uh, doing the register. So... Sorry if I'm a bit husky. I've got a cold. Yeah, she's got a bit of a cold. It's not COVID, thank God. Um, anyway, right. <laughs> it's not that cold, Andrea. It'll get worse. Right, back to you. We need to crack on. Good. So, first off, we're going to start with some meatballs. So, in this egg, sitting at 180 degrees, I have just a little cast iron skillet. Uh, I'm just going to get a bit of oil in there just to warm it up. And what we're going to do is make, make some quick... I've left the mints in the fridge, Helena. Wait, which fridge? Uh, fridge in the kitchen. God, okay. Hopeless. This morning I thought, I'll put it out in the At fridge and forgot. Carrot. So, it's in the fridge. Headbanker. Right. We're just going to use the Thermomix to whiz up. I've got uh, an onion and two slices of white bread. So it's just starting up. Once it's up and going, then we'll chuck those in. So uh, onion going in, two slices of white bread. I'll just break them up a little bit. These are going to make our bread crumbs, and we'll also chop the onion at the same time. So let's fire that up nice and fast. It's going to be noisy. Dump. Right. So if we have a look in this when it opens, breadcrumbs and onion all chopped up nicely. To go in there, to make these a little bit barbecuey, thank you Helena, uh, a little welcome. bit barbecue. hopefully you didn't make any noises indoors. Um, we've got some paprika, smoked paprika, we've got some cumin, a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of chipotle, so dried chipotle and you can get it from Sainsbury's. So we're going to chop that in. We've got about half a teaspoon, three quarters of a teaspoon each of uh, salt and pepper. Salt stuck in there. And I'm just going to get the mince, which is here. I know what I have done. I've left my knife inside, Helena. Don't need it yet, but what is this? I know. Keep, keep her on her toes. And I've got 500 grams. This is Aberdeen Angus. Make sure you get the stuff. I mean, get it from your butcher if you can. I've just been lazy this week. 15% fat. Don't buy the 5% fat stuff. It's got no taste. So we're going to pop that in. And then I'm just going to whiz it up. 
So you see that in there, Andrea? Mm -hmm. On tiptoes. We're just going to give it a mix. Hopefully, that's all ground together now. I'm just going to take a quick look. I should look through the top. Yeah, a little bit more. Give it another five seconds. Thank you very much. Now, if you mix it like this, it will get sticky and it will bind itself together. So you shouldn't need an egg. So there's no egg in this one. And what you should see is we've got quite a sticky, gloopy meatballs. And what we're going to do, and this is going to be like, you might have to go that side, Andrea. How many times is that I've remembered? Three times so far. We're going to go for like just a bit smaller than golf balls. I played golf this week. I played really well this week. Oh, you have yeah, I beat Carlos and Mike. Uh, yeah, so Carlos, yeah. Sorry, Carlos, beat him on the week of his birthday. But I'm sure he'll whip me next week. So I'm going to roll these. This is going to be like um, watching paint dry. So, Helena, who have we got on? Any questions? And so we can hear you from over there. We have got uh, Sue on. Morning, Sue. Sue Stoneman. Martin, Franco, Ash. Morning, morning, morning. Uh, Jeffers. Morning, Jeffers, and uh, thank you for your comments. I assume it's the same Jeffers that uh, made the comments about the curry and the and the tandoor uh, tandoor ring. Uh, Martin you... Sheridan. Morning, Martin Sheridan. Uh, Karen. Who I missed at Big uh, 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 um, Sizzle Fest. I can't believe that he was there all day. We were there all day, no. and we missed him. Uh, I don't know how that works. Mr. White. Morning, Paul. Uh, Paul down in Devon, who I will be skiing with in a few short weeks. Let's hope oh. it starts snowing. So, yeah. In fact, it did snow this week where we're going, so that's okay. Uh, Alfresco Chapel. Sorry? Alfresco Chapel. Morning, Alfresco Chapel. Fifi Rich. Fifi Rich. Wow. Mark. Marky Tomo. Morning, Jay. Mark. Mark Rick. and Tomo. No, Marky Tomo. I can't hear her over here. You can probably hear her perfectly, hopefully, with the mic. Uh, Mark from Smoke Fine Shout Food. Shout if you can't. Mark uh, from Smoke Fine Food. Yeah. Morning, Mark, up in Newcastle. I don't think Nick's got this here. Need to, this I do need to chat to you one day. I haven't spoken to you in ages. You ought to have a telephone call. <laughs> What's Helena laughing at? Uh, so nearly there. One more. No, that's it. Uh, Ash asked, what did you shoot, Nick? You what? Oh, my God. I can't hear you. Ash asked, what did you shoot? Uh, what did gold? I shoot? I shot 17 over, which for me is not so bad. Right, let's pull that shut. Um, which was pretty good, and it wasn't on a course we play a lot. We've only played it like three times. No, I didn't shoot the wife, yeah, as Andrea just said. <laughs> Come close, but, you know. Right. So, meatballs are in. Now, what we're going to do... What is it with the helicopters today? Sorry if you can hear that. There's one just flying over. Um, so, meatballs are in. What we need to do is just give the... We're just trying to brown them off a little bit. So, you can see the ones I put in first. Uh, just got to be a little bit careful with these. They are really good. And the chipotle in them just gives them a zing. Gives them a bit... The paprika a bit of smokiness. The chipotle a bit of smokiness. Yeah. They're so easy, and if you do them in a mixer or in a thermomix uh, like I've done, so simple. And they don't fall apart because you, you really, if you're making like sausages or meatballs, what you need to do is squidge them a lot to, to, to get the fat. It makes them really sticky and they stick together, and then you don't need that egg in there. So, no egg in these. Whoops, knocked a bit off that one, but we'll carry on with those. Now this is going to get a bit hot because I've had the lid open so much, but yeah. Perfect. Right. Remind me to go back every couple of minutes, people. Uh, did you pre-oil the skillet? Yes, I did pre-oil the skillet. Um, it, that's a big green egg. Um, the Minimax skillet, we think they're brilliant. Um, it has been seasoned quite a lot, so it's fairly non-stick anyway. But yes, I put a little bit of oil in there and then just put the meat in. It's 15% fat, so meat, um, fat will come out of that brilliant right 
Now this could be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so we've made spring rolls before, uh, mm. different ones, and last time we made them with the, uh, they're vac packed um, and they're defrosted, but these like, uh, like phyllo pastry style. This time, however, we're gonna go, and it's a bit more delicate. These are gonna blow away as well. This will be quite amusing. <laughs> I'm gonna be running around the garden yeah, chasing, chasing spring roll wrappers. <laughs> So they're like these clear ones. These are what the Vietnamese would do. He's back again. It's the packs. Yeah, that's it. They've, got, they, they've found out where we live. They, they, they're just trying to get these long range photos of me, aren't they? Um, <laughs> in my dreams. Um, so these are like the clear rice paper versions. Now, if you over soak them, they just dissolve. Um, so we will have a go with those. Anyway, what we need to do first is to fry off some of the filling. So I'm going to take this over. Um, we are going to use, in here, I've got uh, about an inch of gar uh, ginger. I've got three teaspoons of uh, garlic. I've got four shiitake mushrooms that I've soaked and then chopped up. And we're going to take them over and put them in a wok. So now we're all together. You should be able to hear us all. So let me get my wok. Um, this wok, wok was rusty as anything this morning because I haven't used it in a while. Um, it's just been on. You can see it's got a lovely, it's clean, a lovely non-stick finish um, to it because I just put groundnut oil in it and got it really hot. So we're going to open that up. We'll pop it in. We'll get this egg going a little bit faster. And then we should be ready to cook. Any questions, Helena? Any comments? Uh, Is John Pritchard on? I uh, haven't seen him. John, if you're on, uh, your porchetta looked fabulous. Um, so he made a porchetta. I had porchetta when I was out for dinner with David and I'm sure his was better, you know, John's was better than the one I had. Uh, but so we've got a few new faces today. So do you remember we met, met Nikki at um, Sizzle Fest? Yes. Hedgehogs chilling. Brain. Yes. Sizzle. Morning, Nikki. Uh, Doris. She was, she was doing, so last week we did the skirt steak. She was doing that in a class with Genevieve Taylor. Yeah. Um, and we sort of mo modified the recipe and gave it a go. Sue, it's sunny down in Devon, and she's jabbed with her COVID booster. Excellent. Well done, Sue. It's not sunny here. It's cloudy know, sunny. I don't know where Nikki is, but it's pouring with rain there. Oh. Uh, and Paul's worried he's going to have a cold tomorrow morning. Why is he going to have a cold tomorrow morning? Well, I would imagine he means a hangover. Oh. <laughs> what's up? What's going on, Paul? <laughs> oh, John Pritchard's literally just joined. Morning, John. We've just given you a shout out, and I just said your I'm lucky. Porchetta. <laughs> <Move on. laughs> Your porchetta looked epic, better than the one I ate when I was out with David from Big Green Egg. Oh, so, uh, new name, Escobar's Chill Grill. Not heard of Morning, anything. Escobar's Chill Grill. Right, we're in with the wok. So I've just got the wok. We've gone in with the mushrooms. We've gone in with the garlic, the chilli. And then I'm going to get some of this mince in here. Not all of it, because... Uh, not chilli, um, ginger. Sorry, thank you, Andrea. And he's done it again. What's going on? No, I doubt it. Oh, we've obviously got some runaways or something in the village. The police are overhead. Right. So this is, um, this pork mince is from our own pigs. So we had uh, our friends over last weekend from the States. And we, had, we took out one of a leg, leg of pork. And it was way too big for, the, for us. So we, uh, yeah, we just... Uh, mint some up and thought we could use it this weekend so froze it this week right now we need to add some um, fishy flavors or some salty flavors some Jap uh, um, some uh, Vietnamese flavors so I'm gonna go a little bit not too much oh god they're gonna circle over us hopefully it, it don't, you can't hear it as much as we can um, yeah the runaway Somebody dogged me in. Speaking of which, while that's frying, this needs to warm up a little bit. Stay there, Andrea. The four! We've got our sticker! Hooray! So we registered nine years ago with Environmental Health and they came and did their first visit and we got a five star rating. I can't believe the police are circling above. <laughs> They come to take their five-star rating back. So, 
Anyway, or my five star rating. Uh, Paul White says it's green peas out looking for barbecue. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Morning, Rob. Rob's barbecue just joined. Morning, Bob. Oh, uh, Martin said you didn't say what the first liquid was that you put in there. Uh, ground nut oil. What else have you put in? Fish sauce. Right. Uh, that's it so far. I'm just doing a light of. I'm going to leave this open because it's, it's not. I need to get it a bit hotter. Um, and the flames will come up the side. I just want to brown it off a little bit. And we're going to use it. Now, what we're supposed to do is then let this cool down, which is going to be quite tricky on this cook meatballs. Yep. Okay. You guys are supposed to remind me. Oh, I was about to. Yeah. <laughs> Andrea's saying she was about to remind me. So, oh, look at those. So you now you can just start wiggling them around. None of them are sticking, look. Oh, got a nice bit of caramelization on the outside. Caramelization equals flavor. They are gonna be good. So now we can start adding some more ingredients. We've got runaways in the village, definitely got runaways. <laughs> it's coming right overhead. Uh, we're going to go in. This is um, one uh, onion. So you can drop it in with the meatballs. Just give it a zhuzh around. Use a spoon for that. And we'll start softening that up as well. And to that, we're going to add a little bit of garlic. And because it's not chilli enough for me, this isn't chipotle, this is just normal chilli flakes. So we'll pop some of those in. Because we like things spicy. Now, if you don't like it spicy, don't put the second lot of chilli in. So, simple as that. Right. We're going to give that a little zhuzh. Now, I've salted the meatballs, so I'm not going to salt the sauce at this stage. Uh, we've got pepper in the meatballs, we've got salt in the meatballs, so that we can add, you know, we can add to this at the end when, when we're happy. We're also going to put parmesan or... When it's finished, we could put parmesan over the top, which I haven't got out. Um, <laughs> she's off. Look. <laughs> um, we're going to put parmesan over the top, and of course, that's salty as well. So, um, right, so they're doing all right. Let's go back to the pork, otherwise, we'll burn the pork. You go that way, I'll go this way. Look at the fire. Right. So you just want to break this up. That's all cooked through nicely. Now, if we've got it really hot, what you'll see is this fat coming out, or the moisture coming out. What I like to do, just like I do my spaghetti bolognese, is get this really hot, drive that moisture off, and then you'll start caramelizing the meat. And you get so much better flavor. So, perfect. So Andrea's saying that's what she did with the chili. So yeah, all these people who do the over the top chili, I don't think you get the same caramelization um, I like to do it in a Dutch oven and I, I like to put the, ch the mince in first and cook it till all the moisture's driven off. It doesn't go dry because then you're going to add more moisture in. But it starts to crackle and pop and that's where you get all the flavour. If you do the over the top chilli, you're not getting all of that caramelisation. So, um, yeah. Now, we're, we're going to make a lot of filling here. They're just, uh, you, they probably can't hear it. But they're just circling. Can I ask them if they. Can you let Helena know if you can hear the helicopters for the helicopter. What's that? Weird comment. Right. Right. That's looking good. Right, last bit on the meatballs and go and see if it's softened those onions up. And then we can get some sauce on. So I'll just grab some. Yeah, you can go over, Andrew. I'll just grab some scissors because that'll make it easier. Oh yeah, onions are starting to soften up. So what I'm going to do now is just add some passata to it. So I'm going to cut the whole top of this off. Uh, Can I ask you a yeah. Why passata? Because um, it's work. I did it and it works really well. Okay. Um, I was just curious. No, because it, oh, it's got some herbs in. I've I picked a herby one up. Yeah, I picked one up with herbs in, but don't worry about that. It would just have some oregano in it. Um, um, so you could add oregano to this. But then I'm just going to add some water. So about 200 milliliters. So this is 500. So I've got it about to there. So 
we'll add that in and we're going to leave this then to cook for the rest of the cook and we'll serve some at the end it will thicken up it will continue cooking those meatballs perfect so this should be 180 200 um, you could bake it um, so you could put the uh, uh, the convector in there so we could bake it I'm just going to turn it down just make sure it doesn't go over 180 and we'll just cook it direct and we should be all right we'll see so I just turn it down a bit but if you, even if you go down to 160 that would be perfectly fine but if you're worried about it put the convector in and just bake it but that will take ages and we haven't got that time right let's go back to our mince that's better it's dried out you're starting to get some of the caramelization on it I'm not going to cook it much longer I'm going to spread it out because I need it to cool and we're just going to take that wok out of there um, and we'll start cooling it down. Morning, Jeanette. Morning, Mrs. Pitmaster Pedro. Nice to see you on. Having morning, you morning, everybody. We met Mrs. Here. Pitmaster Pedro at Sizzlefest. Okay. Right. That's going to cool down a bit. So let's look at the other things we're going to put into there. I'm going to use the same bowl. Uh, so Chris Leonard has said, how long if you go for the bake option? Sorry? How long if you go for the bake option? Um, take a roughly the same time, but you've got to heat the stone up. So then it will that will slow it down a little bit, if that makes sense. You want to, you know, it's going to bake 35, 40 minutes. We're going to speed it through a little bit here because we haven't got 35 or 40 minutes. But I'd, normally I'd leave it on. The sauce will thicken up nicely. 40 minutes in the oven or in the egg, 160, 180 degrees. It'll be stunning. Excuse me. Right. Let's get some... Um, other bits in there so a bit of a toy I'm going to do it onto the block because I need to uh, uh, need to chop them up a bit but a julienne machine I'm not very good with it but as I'm demonstrating perfectly but it's just a little uh, that's better a little blade that has mini blades I don't know if you can see it but little horizontal blades as well <laughs> jeez that's a that's an image we didn't need andrea <laughs> so i'm going to go in with some carrots some julienne carrots i'm going to turn it over i'll do the other side that's so much easier than chopping them by hand make them shortish Right, so we've got some carrots in there. I'm going to add, I've just taken, um, you could use Chinese cabbage. I've got, um, this is just a sweetheart cabbage. So we've got some of that. We've got some a couple of spring onions. Pop those in. And just because I saw them, I was in the Thai shop or in the Asian shop. Um, what are they called? J&M Oriental on just down the road. Brilliant. I've got, I'm so lucky. I've got this Asian shop. Uh, so they had some bean sprouts, and I haven't done bean sprouts in ages, so we'll get the bean sprouts in there. And what we need to do now, I'm not going to put chilies in the spring rolls, because I think we've got enough in the sauce. But what we do need, a tiny bit of oyster sauce. Just to make it a bit gloopy. And then I'm going to grab that mince, and hopefully it's cooled down a little bit. So let's just grab it. <laughs> I didn't realise Sarah you were on, sorry I've missed you jump in. So I'll pop some of the mints in there and this is going to be our filling. In fact let's get it all in. Might be a bit mince heavy but... Sorry if that's going through the mic but... Right, over there. So let's get this mixed up. Now this is where it gets starts getting um, difficult. So we've got that bit of um, oyster sauce in there we've got a bit of meat in there we've got some spring uh, uh, um, bean sprouts we've got carrots we've got cabbage there's all the oyster sauce in one gloop so let's get it mixed in a little bit and this is going to be our filling now we put in um, fish sauce to make it that saltiness we've got some oyster sauce in there a little bit salty a little bit sweet and now I'm covered 
we get that off to one side. Uh, let's put it down here. And I'm just going to wash my hands because then we're going to start on the spring rolls. Nick, <coughs> so um, Tom Rickson yeah. is doing a picanha. Lovely. And Jeffers has asked what is a picanha. So can you explain so that So a picanha to me, is a beef rump cap. So it, around the world, we butcher animals differently depending on the climate and that, how the butchers have, uh, have uh, butchered their animals in the past. So picanha stems from the butchery techniques of South America. Um, it's a beef rump cap. So if you think of the cow's, that's the cow's tail and that's the cow's bum, it's the muscle that sits right at the top. And there's two of them per animal, one for each side. And they're a little triangular cut, about 1.4, 1.6 kilos. Can be a lot less at certain times of the year when the animals are smaller. Um, so I had one in the summer that was only like 800 grams. Um, but yeah, beef, look it up, picanha. There's a recipe on our website. If you go into the recipes, beef, picanha is one of the first ones. We love it. So yeah, no, mama's nodding her head over there. Anyway, right, Delicious. so these spring roll, why are the wasps back? They just like food. Right, um, these spring roll wrappers. Um, I've got, just got a little bowl of water, so they're going in. You don't need to get them too wet. Now this might all go wrong. <laughs> so there's one. I'm gonna place it on my board. I'm gonna leave a bit overhanging because that'll make it easier. And I'm gonna double them up today. Um, only because I think one will be too thin. That actually might need a bit. It's, really, it's, not, it's not flexible yet, so I'm going to do it one more dip. It's starting to go flexible. Now you could use um, hot water. That'd probably help. How many of these are we going to make? Right. Now what I found earlier when I did it is... They'll, they'll soak that water up, but it takes a little bit. Um, I've just put them one on top of the other. That bottom one's gone. This one's starting to go. This one's really quite pliable now. This one is still a bit crispy. But you don't want to overdo it because they'll just melt. So, what we're going to do then? Spoon. We're going to get a couple of spoons of our filling. Or a big spoon of our filling. Let's do it like that. Put it to one end, and then we're going to roll it over. But what we want to do is tuck the edges in. So I'm going to tuck the edges in, and if you haven't given it, made it pliable enough, these will split, they'll crack. And this one is just about pliable enough. And you can roll them up, and when they're sticky, they'll get sticky, they'll stick to each other. So I'm just going to put it on the plate. Put a plate down here. I'll do a couple more and hopefully we'll then be I'll do make three I think so can you just oh do I've little, broken that one look can there you, you go. do a little recap because some of people have joined a little bit later okay so a recap of the cooks we're doing today so we've got a Italian style meatballs so meatballs with a chipotle, chipotle chili meatballs uh, in a sauce we in a tomato sauce we are doing these are going to be a vietnamese spring roll so these are um, rice paper wrappers that you can just buy from most um, asian supermarkets the trick to these is you've got to get them wet enough that they become pliable but not too wet they disintegrate so it's tricky so i need another one where have i just put those there um, or you could just use the standard ones I'm going for double wraps because I don't want them to split because um, I'm not quite that good at them yet. But if you were really good at it, you could do a single wrap. But it's good fun. Or scary if you're doing it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea's laughing at that. Right. See, that one's gone nice and pliable. This one I just need. Leave it another couple of seconds. So, uh, recap. The filling for it, we've got a Vietnamese uh, pork. So, we've got pork with a bit of fish sauce, garlic, ginger that we've fried off and cooked. Uh, we've added some oyster sauce. Uh, we've got some spring onion, uh, spring onion, we've got spring onions in there in fact. Spring onions, carrots and um, bean sprouts. 
So this one is good. That one I've probably, no, just saved. See, this one's going really quite wet now. So I'm going to put that one in there. Ooh. Can you see how, how gooey it's gone? It's, it's like, can you see that, Andrea? Yeah. It's all sort of getting tangled up on itself. Perfect. Right, another big spoon of this. Can I just uh, note, um, yeah. there's been a, so a couple of inappropriate comments from um, someone that's on, so I think we've blocked them now. So okay. just apologies that if anyone was offended. Yeah, name and shame. No, it's fine. I'll name and shame them later. Um, right. Don't need that. Uh, thanks, Sarah, for helping me with that. How did you work out how to block them? Oh, I couldn't seem to do it on the iPad, but Sarah's done it for me. Okay, cool. Uh, so, uh, Mrs. Pitmaster Pedro, glad you've got over COVID. A, a brisket lasagna sounds lush. Oh, yeah. Brisket chilli, brisket lasagna. We've got, tonight, we're going to do, and maybe this will be a future cook, we're doing some beef cheek tacos. Now, um, my friend Martin said he was doing some cheeks, and I can't remember. I think another he one there. I'm just going to let it sit and soak. You just don't want to overdo cheeks. this. Ox cheeks, same thing, think, beef oh, cheeks. Okay, so yeah, it's ox cheeks. They're called ox cheeks. You don't call them beef cheeks, you call them ox okay, cheeks. That, yeah, Martin uh, Hawkins, bless him, is doing that, I think. Oh, what you do? Oh, good on you, Martin. Uh, I saw you were fishing this week, Martin. Smoked and braised Very jealous. <laughs> smoked and braised. Perfect. They sound good. Right, that one's definitely gooey. This one's getting there. Um, if they are thinner than these, you can get them and they're different thicknesses. Um, a thinner one will. Uh, you could just lay them on a wet towel and it will soak up enough water um, that, that uh, you, 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 know, you don't have to dip them like this. Uh, so Kerry yep. has asked, what's the normal pancake used for spring rolls? So the normal one is just uh, one of these. Where are they gone? They come in, um, they're like, a bit like a pastry. It's just a pastry, it's like, like, a, a like a phyllo pastry. Some people use phyllo pastry. Right, another one. I'll leave those three just to sit. What I'm trying to do, it's difficult to show, but this one has gone really sticky. It's, it's, it's soaked up the liquid and it's quite pliable now. Whereas this one is still, still not soaked up the liquid. Oh, now I've got a hole in it. Hang on, let's mend it. It's not a hole. I'm, I've got half the filling sticking out the side. That's no good, because of course, um, what you're trying to do with a oh this is now it's getting sticky it's getting really difficult but what you're trying to do with the pancake roll is see, um, seal it seal it all in there and they aren't really greasy because as the vegetables uh, boil in the fat and the more the steam comes out it, it expels all the oil so Helen always worries that deep frying things are going to be really really nasty no right they look really professional yeah, but we'll see. See how many of them fall apart. See if I can get them off the plate. Right, let's so, go over. Nick, yes. that, that is the big green egg board, that one there, isn't it? But it's no This is, yeah, this is, this is, well, it's an Alfresco Concepts board from Big Green Egg. Uh, yeah. They don't sell it anymore, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I could have sold hundreds of them. Yeah. But, okay, on this egg, if you look, we're at 140 degrees on here. But hopefully, we should be 180, 200 degrees. 203 on our oil. I think we talked about this before because the watt goes down near the fire, uh, it's just hotter down there. So set your egg really low. We're just going to lower them in. You'll see they puff up because they're this, they're rice paper. So they're going to go crispy on the outside. You can shallow fry them. I'm just going to deep fry them. So we'll give those a couple of minutes. Let's go and have a look at our meatballs while they do. We'll come back. Oh, look at those. Bubbling away, smelling gorgeous. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but a little stir. Can you see it's thickening up, thickening up beautifully? They are going to be stunning. Right. So, there, let's not, I'm not going to start another cook until we finish these because I, I know what will happen, it'll all go wrong. How are we doing for time? All right. Right. So, I'm going to flip these. Oop, he says, trying to flip them. Or just flip oil on them. There we go. 
A bit like a life jacket, they only want to go up one way. <laughs> yeah. You see that one doesn't yeah. want to go up. But can you see there's no oil inside them? Just want to give a shout out to Dan Walker, who's just joined the clip. Welcome, lovely to have you on. Morning, board. I missed who that was, but they probably heard it. Dan Walker. Morning, Dan Walker. Perfect. Right. How long left with the spring rolls? The spring rolls. Like, another two minutes. So I'm just going to tidy up a tiny bit before... I'll make some more after, after we finish the show, because we're going to have them for our lunch. Um, what we've done um, is we've got a dipping sauce to go with them. Now, I've made that off camera, but I will show you what we've done. Uh, we have uh, a, a Thai chilli, one clove of garlic, um, some fish sauce, some water some uh, palm sugar. Now I've got runny palm sugar, so we put runny palm sugar in there and you, just, well it's runny, it's like thick gloopy stuff. So you end up stirring it for a while. And some lemongrass. So we've got a li little dip to go with them. It's quite a runny dip, but it should be good. Right, it's just... Beautiful, beautiful what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to know about that, Bob. Right. I'm gonna give them another minute. But yeah, this is these are rice paper. If you want to do the other ones, go for it. Again, stir, uh, just uh, you buy them. They're square, and you're gonna roll uh, from a corner, fold the sides in, and roll them up. I think we did lots of little Thai ones. We did, we did do them. Yeah, which were Nick, stunning. Can yes. I ask another question? Absolutely. So Eva has said, so you don't use the dampener when cooking something like meatballs to slow the cooking down? Uh, I think Eva means the convector. You can do. I, uh, if, you go, if you look back at this cook, yes, we talked about using the convector. We could use it like an oven and roast them, uh, but I haven't got time to do that and get the convector nice and hot. Brilliant, the wasp has sat on the camera. Andrea's looking really happy. Hang on a sec, Andy. Come on. There you go. He likes you. <laughs> um, so you can do it direct or indirect if you're going to do it indirect uh, do it direct like we are um, then turn the temperature down if you have a look at this I keep looking over and the wasps come over here now we're down at 160 170 degrees so uh, don't go too hot if you don't use the convector simple as that right let's get these off Should have brought some kitchen, kitchen roll, roll out. But anyway, I'll put them on here and we'll come back to those in a minute. Would you like some kitchen roll? Yeah, we'll have some kitchen roll. Thank you, Helena. He's got me running all over the So, today. they're not brown. Well, that a bit brown on that side. Oh, look. That one's popped, but never mind. They smell amazing. Yeah, so, slightly different. That's so, the first time we've used that type of... Yeah. I, want, I thought I had loads more of this in the freezer. So we changed, we were going to do a different spring up, spring roll. Um, but then when I found that, I thought, oh, we'll do Vietnamese instead. So um, I thought I'd got way more of those. Thank you, Helena. You're welcome. I take it everyone can hear us all right. I think so. Yeah. So let me just pop these on the, on the, pop them on a bit of uh, grease, uh, uh, kitchen roll. Let them cool down a little bit. Meatballs are doing their thing, so let's move on. We're going to go back into the wok. So, pop the wok back in. Pop a bit more ground nut oil in there. Uh, you could use rapeseed uh, and so on. I don't need the fish sauce, that's for Vietnamese. But we're going to do a bit of that, a bit of that. Uh, and that's it. Oh no, and some of that, and one of those. Right, that's probably meaning, meaning, meaning absolutely nothing to you. We're gonna make a Japanese rice bowl. So when I was in London on Thursday meeting David, we're done with my spatula. Um, I popped to Borough Market to have a look at, you know, grab some ideas. And I saw these and they looked fab. So I, I thought, do love a rice bowl. So I thought we'd make them. So again, we're gonna go pork mince. Now you could go, chicken you could deep fry you could batter and deep fry some chicken oh, i may as well do the lot and then <laughs> we don't use it we don't use it right i'll pop that in the bin one sec i'll leave that open because it's just getting hot 
Um, Mama loves a bit of leftovers. Those spring rolls are going to cool down, but we'll do some hot ones for you in a bit. Yes. Oh, you need us to test them. Sorry? You need us to test them. Would you like to test one now? Yes, yes. I'll make some more for a photo, I guess. Okay. Uh, let's... Well, I need to test one. Yeah, I'll give you the one with a hole in. Okay. Uh, I don't want to do that. I'll put that on there. You can have a bit of dipping sauce. You'll have to share it. Yeah. There you go, that's sharing. But they should be crispy. Right, so pork mince in there is going. Now, I have got a mixture of garlic and ginger in here. Um, we use this for our curries. So it's about one... Apple. Yeah, so I've minced it up with a, it's a bit of water. It's about one third ginger to two thirds garlic, if that makes sense. So we're going to pop that, some of that in there. Ginger and garlic, good Asian flavours. So it's probably two or three tea, teaspoons of that into this. It's what this is about 500 grams of mince, Sorry, bit, maybe a bit more. Right, I'm going in. <laughs> she likes them, hooray! <laughs> so, to this mince, I'm going to brown it, but what we're going to add, we're going to add a little bit of soy, a little bit of sake. So, let's leave the lid open. Not, I wouldn't normally say to leave the lid open, but I want to get this pan raging hot. So I'm actually going to even open the bottom a bit more. Fully open. If you're going to do this, um, just, just be really careful if you're going to do that because the, the flames will start coming up the sides and you'll start burning your hands, so just be careful. Oh, Mama, she's got Yeah, she'll be fine. So, just going to do this. How are we doing for time? Not too bad. Do we like those? Mm. Good. Any comments? Any improvements? I think I need another one just for I think she needs it. another. I like it. <laughs> right. Not they say, feed a cold, start the fever. There you go. Not they say, sit them out in the garden on the t keyboard. <laughs> At least we lit the fire. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to add um, some soy, bit of uh, soy sauce, bit of saltiness, probably a couple of teaspoons. Not too much. I'm going to add some sake. A couple of teaspoons. Maybe a bit more than that. Hey. Yeah. Okay. And we just. Reef oh. said. Yep. Thoughts on the Audi Camargo the starter before investing in a big green egg? Um, oh, they've put me, that's put me on the spot. Um, the Audi Camargo works really well. We've had customers here who've had them. Uh, their comments were that the big green egg was a completely different beast to the Audi Camargo. Um, they struggled. We had three people actually who had Audi Camargos on one class. Um, they all, I think they all knew each other. Um, <laughs> so uh, they struggled with temperature control and were amazed at how easy the egg was. Um, the other disadvantage of the Aldi is it's a random size, so you can't get accessories for it. Um, so, yeah, just, I mean... I've got no problem with people buying them. You know, if, if that's how you want to get into it, and that's you know, do it. Um, you, but if you invest in a big green egg, you will not be disappointed. Absolutely, will not be disappointed. Right? Can you see this, Andrew? It's dried out now. So I just want to get a little bit of colour on there. So I'm going to shut it while we get the rest of the stuff ready. So I have a little bowl here. So this is going to be our bowl. Next to our wok. You might see we've got a little rice cooker and in it, try not to get the feet wet, uh, feet greasy, we've just got rice. So I'm just going to, these little rice cookers, they hold the rice. Um, so this is uh, short grain Japanese rice, the stuff that you'd use for sushi. And we've just put it in the rice cooker, it's held in there. So we're going to get some of that in. I'll leave a little bit in there. Oh, look at that, I've spilled it everywhere. Um, the beauty of these things is they hold the rice. They'll hold it for up to 24 hours. So, right, we've got our rice. With that, we need a few things. So, I'm going to grab... Oh, 
put a few condiments in. So, nothing like a little bit of pickled ginger. So that's some pickled ginger on the side. Don't need masses. A little bit of pickled ginger. Where's the lid gone? I'm hopeless. Right, I had to try this. We have. What have I done? Yum Asia. Someone wanted to know what Yum Asia. Like. Yeah. I'll put a link on the recipe. Yeah. Because then um, I can link it to Amazon and we get about 3p if you buy it. So, or click on any of our other Amazon links and uh, we get a few p. Um, it, all of it helps. Um, I had to have a go at this. This is Japanese radish, uh, but it's uh, pickled. So, a few thin slices. That. Oh. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, it's lovely. But we're so lucky having this Asian shop. Now, if you haven't got it, you can get all of these things online. It might cost a few quid more. The, the, re the recipe I saw in London had pickled or sour pickled mustard leaves. I've used the wrong bowl, haven't I? That's what we were going to use. Oh, well, we're in the wrong yeah, the, the one. So I'm just going to chop this up. So, sorry, this so this is pickled mustard leaf. Wow. So you have that around the edge. Oh, I'm probably burning all the stuff over there. So let me grab our wok. We'll take this over because we'll fill it up over here. Oh, I am burning it. We're all right. So, one-handed. That's not the best way to do it. I'll come over here, Andrea. Um, just grab this. So we're going to put some of our pork on. Now there's way too much here for... There you go. Bit of pork. I'll leave this over here. Just... And then to it. A little bit of QP um, mayonnaise. Um, so Japanese mayonnaise. And it comes in this squidgy, most squidgy bottle you've ever seen. Now, this may sound like a weird combo, but when I ha I'd actually ate this on the other day, it was delicious. If you like a little bit of zing, this is uh, Japanese uh, chili. Sorry, it's probably really difficult to see. Really difficult to see. So we'll put a bit of Japanese chili over the top to give it a bit of zing. And then we've got some spring onions. And I'm just going to put a little bit of chopped red chilli because it will make it look pretty. So we've got the green, we've got all of those things. And you don't have to add this. So there we go. So that is our Japanese uh, pork piece. I'm going to put the meatballs in here because I think they'll look nice okay. in here. Right. Our meatballs are looking stunning. I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use my, probably a bit naughty, but same spoon. Let's get our meatballs out. Now, you could serve these with a garlic bread, with, look how gloopy that is. Mm. Oh, I've made a right mess of that. i have to tidy that up. Oh, I'll leave the others in there. And tidy this plate up a tiny bit so we've got our meatballs let me just grab a little bit of blue roll don't need to be seeing that do we Look at that, almost like a chef <laughs> our meatballs now pretend it's parsley it's not it's coriander but i haven't got any oh, no i haven't got any parsley in the garden but just to give it a little bit of Colour. That'll do. And our spring rolls, which are going to pop on here with our dipping sauce. They're dwarfed. Let's grab our dipping sauce back from the ladies. There you go. And I'm going to put a bit of these, could, these do need a bit of coriander. 
What are you talking about me blowing off? Uh, so, Rob... <laughs> there you Rob... go. And a little bit of... Actually, Rob, I'll ask him in a minute. When is this? Sorry, go for it. So, uh, Rob, yep. from Rob's Barbecue, yep. said, do you ever use MSG when cooking Asian dishes? I do. I love a bit of MSG. I should have put some in. Yeah, we put on our, our salt, uh, on our um, squid that um, we sort of borrowed uh, the recipe from Luke down at High Grange, Devon. Um, yeah, we use MSG in that. But yes, MSG, do it, buy it, use it. It's salty, it's a flavour enhancer, it's awesome. So yeah, should have used some MSG today. So we have a Japanese rice bowl with pickled ginger, pickled, uh, what was that? Pickled, I've forgotten what they were, radish. Oh, leaves. Pickled radish leaf, uh, mustard leaves. Uh, we've got our spring Vietnamese spring rolls with the Vietnamese dipping sauce and our Italian meatballs, obviously with parsley over the top. <sighs> Looking fab. Not bad for 45 minutes. Right, here we go. Sorry. Let's go over to the ladies. Sorry for that last comment. We obviously didn't do a very good job of blocking that guy, so uh, we'll... Okay, no worries. Right. We'll sort that out afterwards. Um, so, if you... Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see us cook, what's when's our next cook? Well, technically two weeks, but maybe we haven't got anything planned for next week. We might, so. yeah. So we'll do a cook next week. If, are you guys up for it? Yeah, we were going to do them oh, every. I'm not around to okay, so cool. Well, it'll be Helena and me, and we'll see how we go, but we'll sort it out. Um, but yeah, maybe next week I'll let you know. Um, if not, definitely two weeks away. When's our Christmas one? Twenty. Uh, it's the end of November. Twenty-fifth, is it? Uh, Twenty. Uh, Twenty-something of November. What we're also going to do a lot of smaller dishes that I'll record offline, so we'll get those up and going. Yeah, the twenty-sixth of November. Twenty-sixth of November. We are doing beef. Wellington. Beef Wellington for sure. And um, before then, we'll do a turkey, so it's ahead of Thanksgiving. Um, maybe we'll do that offline or record yeah. that. Um, so you can see how we do it, what we like to do. Uh, um, yeah. So things to note. Uh, we have the new meter two block in, uh, two probe block in. So the meter block is the one that's Wi-Fi connected. The four probe was absolutely too much for most people. We've got one, we love it. But there's now a two probe block. We've got those in stock. What I am going to do, check this week, and because the, the other meter block, the meter plus... Um, what you can do is if you've got another probe, you can put it into the, the block normally, into the old ones, and it will recognise it in that block. So I'm going to check that that works. But we've got the two probe meter block in uh, stock. We've got the meter back in stock. We've got rotisseries in stock. We'll be getting a whole load more of those. They're on order. They're on their way. Uh, anything Brig Green Egg we can get for you, and we'd really appreciate if you support us as a small business. We are no more expensive than Big Green Egg. If anything, we might be a little bit less expensive, but I can't say that. Um, and it still gets delivered directly from Big Green Egg. Your warranty still with Big Green Egg. It's, it's awesome. Um, but, yeah. They look stunning. That all looks good. Look we'll take the not usual, take the photos, we'll eat it, and we'll let you know how it goes. Right. Any other comments, Helena, before we go? No, I think I have just managed to block that chat. Okay. So, uh, sorry about that, guys. Yeah. Um, excellent. No, all right. I think everyone's enjoyed it. We've had lots of lovely comments. Perfect. Um, Kerry is loving the fact that the Beef Wellington will be in time for Darren's birthday. Awesome. And Lucy's on today. <laughs> Morning, She's Lucy. Lucy and Mackay. Yeah. Paul said that he should be watching more often. And I said, unless he ups his attendance, he can't take on his ski wife duties. Yeah. So I share a room with Paul when I go skiing. Uh, Hence, Helena calls him my ski wife. Uh, Gary yeah. is watching from the Caribbean. Room. Oh, oh. That's uh, just not on. Fabulous. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's oh, about it. Anyone so, from Australia this week? Uh, no, no, not from Australia, but we did have Thomas from Germany. Oh, there you go. Perfect. All right, guys, thank you for watching. It is pretty much nearly an hour, so apologies, I've overrun. I'll scale it back next week, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, cheers, guys.